Welcome back to episode 36 of the Block Runner Podcast. I am your host, William, as always here with I-Man. What's going on? And today, we're bringing a very special guest, a man that needs no introduction, a legend, John McAfee. Almost a unicorn in a way, like... <laughs> You know, a mythical creature. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. There's so there's so much lore and history behind this man. It's I don't think we're gonna have enough time to go through it all. Yeah, no, we don't. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, uh, it's it's real pleasure to have you on. Um, we actually grew up with your name, so you're synonymous with like Windows and Word. I mean, you're. I, I mean, it's it's a real pleasure to talk to you, man. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's it's been twenty years since I was involved in McAfee. Um, I loved the work when it when it first started. Um, when we grew to about two thousand people in nineteen ninety one, I was no longer having fun. I mean, I spent all my time with stockholders, board of directors meetings, personnel issues, finance. It's that's no fun for me. I mean. <laughs> When it first started, it was a war mm-hmm. between the antivirus companies, and I was the only one for an entire year, and the virus writers. Um, and it was like a, a moral a crusade. The programmers and I, we were, we'd get a new virus, and we'd spend all night taking it apart, finding its, its vulnerabilities and weaknesses, and how we could detect it, number one, and remove it, number two. And that was thrilling. I mean, we'd, we'd go for five days straight without sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, when when it grew to this monstrous size, I wasn't having fun. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do development. I was responsible for the whole fucking company. So, you know, I just, um, I went in, went in one day. Well, first thing I did is I hired my replacement, Gary Larson, who was the senior vice president uh, at IBM at the time. Hired him. Uh, after two weeks, I saw... Eh, this bastard's smart. <laughs> he, yeah. he can manage this. I went in, shook hands, and said goodbye, and I never went back. Interesting. Well, I want to take you back to, uh, let's time travel a little bit. Let's go back to 1987. You just started McAfee Associates. It's super early days of the internet. What What did you see at the time that gave you the motivation to start the company in the first place? Well, I mean, I, we, we didn't have computer viruses up until 1987. The first computer virus was the Pakistani brain, uh, built by two brothers in a computer repair shop in Lahore, Pakistan. Yep, I remember. No one had even heard of the concept before. Um, you remember? You you, well, yeah. <laughs> how, how old are you? How old are you, my friend? Go, go, I'm, I'm only 33, but uh, I remember reading the history of, of all no, that fair stuff. Enough. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, so when it was first discovered, it was news. People go, "What is this?" And the day that it was discovered or made public, my brother-in-law was reading a paper and he said, hey, listen to this. There's this thing called computer viruses. I snatched the paper from him, read the article, and I thought, well, how the fuck did they do that? How do you write a program with the capability of infecting other programs Mm -hmm. or operating systems or boot sectors, right? Uh, Or even modifying the ROM in some cases. Um, How do you do that? And then it just came to me, go, oh, it's fucking simple. And simultaneously, I go, well, it's simple to stop as well. So I designed this little program, and uh, my uh, programming friend and I put it together in about 30 hours. And I put it up on my bulletin board system. I had the largest bulletin board system in Silicon Valley at the time called Homebase. I had, I had 32 phone lines coming into my house. <laughs> that was these are the days prior to we didn't have the internet we had bulletin boards uh, you would upload files to one someone would download them and upload them to another it was slow but when i put my virus scan program up 10 million people had it within a week wow. and we're using it. and um i so, don't know i mean the rest is just history it's just chance everything in life is chance you so, think you plan your future let me tell you all Mm-hmm. The best laid plans of mice and men go astray. Um, and the other thing you want to remember is the military adage, no military plan survives contact with the enemy. And 
the the human or the personal uh, version of that is no plan in your life will survive the reality of the world around you. Mm. This is the truth. That's some good wisdom right there. Just to start off that way. No, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how good it is. Okay. <laughs> well, wait. I'm just saying. Listen. Let me let me tell you the the greatest story that proves that, and that's Bill Gates and Microsoft. All right. Mm. So you think, well, God, Bill Gates is so smart to build that company. No, he built an operating system. So did digital research down in Los Angeles. IBM came along with the IBM PC. Great hardware manufacturers, horrible software manufacturers. They were in a time crunch to catch up with Apple, who came out with the first PC. Um, so they went to digital research first. It was an older company to buy the rights to their operating system in, in wonderful terms. Basically, listen, we're not going to pay you anything. But we're going to use your operating system and give you the rights to that operating system. Well, good God, any smart business family gone, well, listen, uh, you don't have to pay me anything. In fact, I'll pay you everything I have if you'll take it from me for free. Why? Because IBM, you knew they were going to become the world fucking standard. End of story. And they were willing to give digital research perpetual rights to the operating system. <laughs> so, so sure, you're not going to make a dime per year, but then your first year, you're going to make a billion dollars. So digital research, they had a digital research, a very conservative dude. IBM showed up on a Friday morning and said, here's our deal. We have to have an answer now. Well, he's conservative and says, I can't sign anything unless my lawyers look it over. This is a simple one page fucking sheet saying, listen, you give us the operating system, we give you the full perpetual rights to write the operating systems for our PCs. The guy goes, I got to talk to my lawyers. I go, we don't have time. They hopped the plane, went up to Seattle that same fucking day, sat down with Bill Gates, who had MS DOS at that time, and gave him the same offer. Well, he signed it immediately. Clever enough to understand, yes, I'm not getting a dime out. But was going to make me the richest man in the world. So now, did he plan that? Is there anything Bill Gates could ever have done to plan that? Mm -hmm. No. But this is what life is, people. Mm -hmm. I did not plan to write antivirus software. My brother-in-law, who'd been living with me for two years, lazy son of a bitch, uh, who did nothing but read the newspaper, read me that article. That was luck. Mm. I could not have planned that, people. So if you think you're in charge of your life's plans, I want to tell you right now, I'm 74 years old, and not a single plan in my life that ever worked. Mm -hmm. So drop them and wait for life to pass an opportunity in front of your nose, which it does every hour of your life if you're alert enough to notice it and pick it up. You anyway, know, I don't know how it got off on that, but there you have it. No, uh, one of my favorite quotes is actually, luck is just the intersection of preparation and opportunity. No, that's all it is. Yeah. Opportunity is what you cannot plan. That's and right. opportunity is what you have to be alert to. If you have a plan and you're sticking to it, I promise you, there ain't no opportunity in the world that's going to fit into that plan. You have to grab that opportunity and abandon your fucking plan. Mm -hmm. You think Bill Gates did not abandon every other plan in his life after IBM walked through that door? Because they opened up a door that previously did not exist, nor could it have been anticipated. When I did the antivirus, I could not have anticipated viruses popping up. You know, two years earlier, I'm going to do a business plan. I think viruses are going to come up before right. it been invented so no you don't have control over your life you think you do uh, and you convince yourself through rationalization that as your plans get unraveled well they got unraveled because of this or so and so fucked up or i was screwed over by my business partner or the market wasn't ready no this is a fucking plan mm -hmm. that's why it didn't work mm -hmm. 
Well, that's a perfect segue into what's happening today. Then uh, there's got there's a whole world of opportunity that within the cryptocurrency space. So I guess oh, a, yes. a good question to ask you is what what do you see as the biggest opportunity today? Maybe people aren't aware of, or uh, I know you're involved. Well, I think- yeah, I ahead. think our biggest opportunity is to stop viewing crypto as a way to make money and start viewing it as a way to use money appropriately, meaning as a way to free you from the financial slavery that you have been in for your entire life. Mm-hmm. Now, that's an opportunity. Are we going to be smart enough? To pick that fucker up, mm-hmm. or is the lure of instant riches going to blind us as it normally does, mm-hmm. and let us fall back into that old system, only with more money and less money? No, listen, it is a ruse created by those in power. Mm-hmm to divert us from what could be the greatest weapon ever given to the sovereign individual. A bloodless weapon, a nonviolent weapon. And that weapon is the key to unlock your cage and everyone else is around you and free yourselves from the corrupt, overburdening attention of governments out of control. So how do we, <clears throat> how do we give, send that message or portray that message to an, uh, to the common man who doesn't necessarily, they might not be able to identify that there's a problem in the first place, especially here, like in the United States, a first world country, mm-hmm. you know, the system is operating that as, as expected, you know, a, a younger person from our, you know, a millennial generation that they, they, we were born and raised in this system. We don't know, uh, any way to escape it. So do we need some type of catalyst event uh, in order for that message to become more clear that there is an alternative out there right now within blockchain and cryptocurrency? Like a monetary collapse. Yeah. No, well, the situation's already happened. Yeah. And it's been happening for a hundred and six years in America. And that is, let me ask you a question. Yeah. What do you think every American's greatest expense in life is? Taxes. Give me an answer. What? Taxes. Taxes. <laughs> Taxes. That was quick. <laughs> you, you work for the government for two, three, or sometimes four fucking months yeah. out of the year. The sweat of your brow. And the fruits of your labor taken from your hands as you are creating it. Do you understand? This is what serfdom used to be. Here's a plot of land, plow it. I'm the king. I'm going to send some people around and take 25% of it for me. Even though I can't eat that much food, I'm taking it. No, we're in the same fucking situation. So you're asking what needs to happen? It's happened, people. Wake the fuck up and see the insanity of working for a government Mm -hmm. for four months out of the year. They take everything for those four months. And you tell me that's not slavery? That's that's, that's number one, unconstitutional in America. Read the fucking Constitution. Mm -hmm. It is morally... um, perverse and it was cleverly designed to put the burden of raising revenue because that's what government's major efforts are are put into how are we going to fund ourselves well, let's tax imports let's which is fine i'm talking yeah. only about income tax mm-hmm. let's do this let, let's do that no they didn't have to do that anymore with the passage of the income tax They did not even need clerks and adding machines anymore. Mm -hmm. They made it mandatory that you, you add the figures up, you fill out the fucking forms, (laughs) you collect all the documentation. All we want is your fucking check. So all they need are three people to take the checks and walk across the street and put them in a fucking bank. Yeah. That's what they perpetrated, a joke. 
a horrific perpetration of horror on the American people in 1913. We didn't have taxes prior to 1913. We got along just fine. People go, well, how do you fund the government? There are 36 countries today that have no income taxes that are thriving. I can't spend five hours um, tutoring the world. Look it up, people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rather than going, oh, we can't fund it, which is what the government says. Oh, we don't have income tax. How do we fund? Google it. You'll figure out there are thousands of ways. A road tax of 10 cents a mile in America would fund our fucking government, people. Is that not more fair mm -hmm. than you working for three to four months for the government for free? You don't have to use the roads, all right? So do you believe crypto is the mechanism to get us away from high taxes? No, I don't, I don't believe it. I know it. I mean, it's so fucking clear. I mean, why, why am I in a Faraday cage communicating? We don't live here. This is our communications room where no signal can go in or out. And I have multiple layers of truth private VPNs that cannot be breached. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm talking to the world about what I'm about to say, which is you want to free yourself? You don't want to pay taxes because they are illegal and unconstitutional and unjust? Well, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is do all of your transactions in crypto, in a privacy coin, through a distributed exchange. Nobody not even your wife, if you do not want her to know, or your husband, mm -hmm. will know what you're doing. Now, am I suggesting that people break the law? No. I'm suggesting that people do something which we have forgotten how to do. Be civilly disobedient when we have an unjust law. A law that does not involve me not hurting someone or stealing but no something i'm simply doing between me and the government mm -hmm. nobody else that if we have an unjust law i believe that you have the right to be civilly disobedient and refuse to obey that law doesn't mean you're doing anything violent civil disobedience is called civil because all right, I'm being calm here. I'm not hurting anybody, but I ain't filing my taxes. Mm -hmm. If every American said, I'm not filing, and by the way, not filing taxes is not against the law. Correct. Yeah. What's, against, what's against the law is filing taxes and lying. It's called fraud. Mm. If you don't file them, you haven't lied, you haven't broken the law. Now, yes, if every American stopped and refused, we would bring the government to the fucking negotiation table, would Absolutely. we not? As people, the government people works for us. We don't work for it. It has changed from being our servant to quite obviously being our master, even to the point of saying, you no longer own your own body completely. It may be your body, but I'm the government. I'm not going to let you put marijuana in that mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. In, in the 30s, uh, the 20s and 30s, they wouldn't let you put alcohol in that body. In the 40s, they wouldn't let you put ideas into your mind, like Darwinism. Do you understand? You no longer own your own body and mind. This is how severely twisted our government has become. Right. So do you think it's possible um, <clears throat> with blockchain technology, could we, as humanity or society, form our own decentralized governance uh, ecosystem in the future, you know? Uh, yeah, if, if we if we have the courage and strength to ignore and bypass what they are saying crypto is, a way to get rich, exchange, hold, sell. No, no. You, you do understand that is a decoy, something to distract you, and what distracts you more than the promise of quick riches. Mm -hmm. If you doubt me, go to Las Vegas and see how much money has been suckered out of people wanting to get rich quick. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful inducement. 
please God, people see beyond this. What is the point of getting rich and staying in your cage? Will it make your cage any larger? No, I promise you it will not. I have been there. No, no problem. I have no problem with getting rich. And if you also use the currency that you are holding to buy or sell goods and services, then sure, do some trading too. But to make crypto, the sole purpose being to get rich is to buy into those in power that are deluding you with that concept. Isn't that one way government can regulate or maybe restrict uh, the adoption of cryptocurrencies? Can't they just uh, tell industry that they're no, they not allowed to accept cryptocurrency as a form of payment? Wouldn't that be like Who a cares? huge roadblock for this Who movement? cares? Who cares? Um, it does not matter that marijuana is illegal. Mm, it's true. a whole fucking industry. And, and most of the, many of the people in the world still smoke it. True. Do you understand that you cannot enforce laws that delve into that level of private life that simply don't affect other people? Mm -hmm. You can't. It's never. Did they stop alcohol by imposing serious sentences for possession or use? No. They drank more alcohol in prohibition than at any other time in human history. It cannot stop what you choose to do in the privacy of your home, including deal with your own finances, which is nobody's business but yours, people. It's the trick, the sleight of hand that says, we must know because there are criminals in the world and we must stop them. Therefore, in the search for criminals, we are going to impose restrictions on you. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't have private finances anymore, I'm sorry. Or you can't bullshit. We can do what we choose. Are we wise enough to choose the right thing? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I think people are waking up to it. So I think we're heading in that direction, actually. Just by using cryptocurrency, it forces the government to adjust. Yeah, yeah I'm but... having a blast. We only have time for one more question. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, so you tweeted yesterday about Epstein. What? What? what can you explain that? Well, there's a meme going around on on the on uh, social media. Uh, Epstein didn't commit suicide. Right, right. Um, last week we um, we came out with the WACT token, W H A C K D. Um, it's a deflationary <laughs> token that we're airdropping uh, 700 million tokens tomorrow at midnight. Um, and we have 8,000 signups, not a lot. They're each getting over 80,000 each now, unless there's more people signing up. Um, so yeah, I want to keep the upside thing alive. We are, we're coming. It's a, it's a joke token. You know this, even though it is deflationary, right. Doge was yeah. the biggest joke token of all tokens. I mean, it's still around. Right. It actually has value. I don't know how <laughs> it, it mystifies me, but it does. So. The Epstein thing, number one, I truly know that Epstein did not hang himself. Please, God, people look at the facts. Right. And number two, the meme is handy, and our whack token is coming out at just the right time. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of tweets about Epstein until tomorrow. Well, one last question with, uh, I want to get your thoughts on artificial intelligence. Do you fear AI as Elon Musk fears AI? I think I fear AI far more than Elon could ever fear it because I am far older than him and I have much more experience with this technology. And I promise you, it is like inviting Satan into your house and begging to sign a contract for your soul. I'd much rather do that of the CAI pop up on the landscape, which it will, unfortunately, and we will have to deal with it one way or other. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me, uh, people say this, oh, I'm afraid, oh, I'm not afraid. Let me give you my rationale for why you damn well better be afraid. And that is 
who creates the AI? Humans, the human mind from technologists. I will pose this question. Is it possible to create anything, anything, which is not inherently within you? Can you? Does an artist create a piece of art which he has not imagined? No. Everything in life that we touch is a reflection of us. When it gets so deep that we're talking about intelligence itself and everything that goes along with it, you have to ask, who is mankind? And we are gracious and loving and kind and generous. We're compassionate. But simultaneously, simultaneously, we are angry and suspicious, greedy and hostile. We're jealous and envious. And if you think those characteristics, both positive and negative, are not going to show up in the AI that we create, then you don't understand what intelligence is. Because intelligence is the totality of our consciousness and the methods by which we process it. And how do we process it? Based on this dichotomy between I'm a good person and I'm a horrible person, which everybody is, people. Be honest with yourselves and look in the mirror. If you can tell me you've never lied, never been jealous, never been angry or hostile, never been greedy or petty, never been envious, then please come and see me and I will bow down and give you my everlasting allegiance because that person does not exist. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. All right. Okay. All right, John, thank you very much for joining us, man. I really appreciate your insight. I, I hope I hope this hasn't been too uh, deep or heavy. I, it seems like we, we touched on serious subjects, so I... Thought I'd be serious. Any any <laughs> last like. words? Do you want to talk about McAfee decks? No, no. I, but I would like to talk about what people should be doing with their lives, and that is, do only what you love. And if you find yourself doing something that you don't love, stop doing it. I mean, let me give you an example. Every time I have had a job, I wake up on Monday morning happy and anxious to get back to work. And on Friday, I'm so disappointed that they're not opening the office on the weekends so that I can come to work. Because every job that I have taken, I have loved. And if you're doing a job that you do not love, then are you masochistic? Or well, what is making you do it? It's fear. If I don't have a job, I'll starve. Nobody starves in this world. It has the will and ability to work and an intelligence above that of a three-year-old. This is the truth. So do what you love, folks. And if you find yourself doing what you don't, stop doing it. And thank you very much. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Welcome. And we're back. Yo, yo, yo. All right. So we just finished the John McAfee interview. <laughs> Well, we had a couple a, hours ago. A couple hours ago, but we had a little technical difficulty. Yep. Same old, same old, dude. Yeah, Fucking man. disaster over here. <laughs> God damn it, man. Fucking worst productions on the planet. <laughs> dude, we need like a we fucking a, technical engineer over here. Yeah, we need our Jamie. Whatever you oh, yeah, want yeah. to call it. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> uh, no, we need we need an AI to kind of take care of all this. Hey, call it uh, Jarvis. Yeah, Jarvis. Like, just record, start recording everything. Make sure it fucking continues recording. We just need a better camera, honestly. <laughs> we just need more money. God damn it. Start anyway. donating now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we had a the interview, man. Let's I guess let's just talk about that. Yeah, let's like, debrief. Um <clears throat> So I, I guess the first thing is I don't we just assume we were gonna talk to him for an hour. Uh we, only well, got we definitely yeah. Like leading up to this interview, we were obviously very psyched. Like this is definitely yeah. like that was a big opportunity to yeah. schedule a fucking John McAfee appearance on our yeah. 44 subscriber YouTube page. <laughs> well, yeah, we got a lot of subscribers, man. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, but we talked about this all. Am I too loud? Uh, no, you're good. You're good. We talked about this all the time on the podcast. Like our, uh, 
off the podcast. We're like, dude, like this guy has tons of notoriety and he's got like big projects in, in the works. Yeah. If he really want, had a message he wanted to get out there, like why is he coming to these smaller platforms to kind of like get that message out? Yeah. You and know? ultimately he, he just wants to talk to people. Yeah. According to him, those are his own words. He just wants to like talk. Yeah. I mean, he has a fucking like bunker set up for him to do exactly that. He showed it to us. What yeah. was it, what's it called? It's a Faraday cage. Explain what that is. So a Faraday cage is a... I mean, it looks like a tinfoil room to me. Yeah, it looks like a bunch (laughs) of foil. (laughs) No, but it's supposed to block wireless signals from coming in. And and, going out, right? And going out, correct. Yeah. And uh, I guess it's his way to minimize exposure to his location. And so he has a couple hard lines going from the bunker to the outside world via the internet. And then, of course, he uses VPN connections to uh, evade any... Uh, authorities looking for his location. So he's Which, a, yeah, 100% I mean, off grid pretty much. Absolutely. Like communications at least. If you set up your VPN connections correct, you could definitely avoid um, detecting your location. Some In some VPNs, you do have to be careful. They can get subpoenaed and they can know your IP address and end up finding where you are. Yeah. So, so obviously he knows what he's doing. <clears throat> uh, he hasn't been caught yet. Not not that he has anything legitimate to run away from other than, like, well, speculation. Taxes. taxes. IRS, dude. He did talk about taxes, to, though, like how it's unconstitutional. And I've seen that argument in, uh, in I guess, other videos. Well, it's a very, like, core tenant to, like, the libertarian philosophy, I guess. Yeah. But, it, that, again... It's a legitimate yeah. argument. I we mean, didn't get to go too deep into it, unfortunately, because we yeah. were... Very short on time, but I kind of wanted to get his idea of what. Okay, he made it pretty loud and clear that he's against taxation and yeah, uh, you know, government overreach. So, like, what's the? Uh, I guess what's the solution to that is yeah. You know, what what does the government look like if it's not collecting you know our income, a portion of our income every quarter? Yeah, or whatever. Like, well, he's talking specifically. Uh, he he doesn't mind taxing. He he minds taxing income. Income, and so like if you're doing purchasing goods, like that should be taxed. Yeah. Um, roads, all that stuff, like tollways, like that's yeah. where that's where the country makes its revenue. Okay. In providing its its services. Yeah. Right? So that makes sense, and uh, you know, he's saying that he doesn't want to explain that to people. You should look at other countries <laughs> and how they they tax their their public. So basically, like whatever infrastructure the government's responsible for laying out, that's where they collect their yeah, basically the the payback for creating these things. Yeah, I guess like income is more yeah, it's that's personal, you know. Yeah, like the government shouldn't have any like yeah, they I mean, shouldn't even know how much money we're making, honestly. Yeah, I I, I definitely see where he's coming from. I, I can see that argument. Yeah, um, it's it's hard for me to make a, like a uh, like a stand on like do I agree or disagree. It is. Because I, I just don't know enough. I just don't know enough. And we're like so far down the deep end of yeah, like government. Yeah, that's right. You know, like we can't even imagine a world without government like deciding everything. Yeah, I mean, you remember when you first got your job and your first paycheck. What is the first thing you noticed? How fucking little it was. Well, <laughs> well okay, what was the second thing you noticed? Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, tax, you know, like a good portion of it was yeah. like not coming to me. Yeah. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, I I remember when I first saw my first paycheck, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, I was mentally prepared for it. I mean, I've heard it my whole life. I mean, yeah, I knew it was coming. I just, when you see it, like, yeah, yeah, it hurts directly. It's like, (laughs) yeah, the fucking tax man, man. Sucks sucks balls. Now, again, I don't think taxes are entirely bad. It's just, I don't know. If there's another way, we should explore it. That's where I stand. Yeah, we didn't even get to ask him about UBI or nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, we, man, we had we had exactly eighteen questions, and and we didn't really intend to go through all the questions, but yeah. we did have some some bangers here. <laughs> uh, but we did get to ask him like one of the more important questions, which is artificial intelligence, and he fears it more than a, uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, I guess I got to go back and see what he, exactly he said. Yeah. But. I definitely wasn't expecting that. I mean, I mean, I should expect that, dude. That's like something he would totally say. <laughs> like, end is near. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's something he, he would say. Uh, but, I mean, these guys, they're not dumb. Elon and, and John, 
you know, if they fear AI, there's a legitimate reason. Yeah. Whether it ends up being true or not, that's, you know, for another day. But just like, you know, I was watching another interview with Elon, and he was saying that just like we have the the an, an administration for governing flights, another one, the FDA, Food Drug Administration. Yeah. We have all these administrations to govern certain industries. Yeah. He says that there needs to be one for artificial intelligence. 100%. And I agree. Just regulation. Like, yeah. parameters need to be set up, you know. Maybe another one for cryptocurrency. I mean, I, I don't know. Well, there, there definitely will be that. But know? an independent one, not necessarily, like government sponsored well i guess fda and all of them they're they're government entities mm. so yeah i mean it was now he went more like for i don't know like if he was like under the influence of any type of uh narcotics narcotica i didn't pick that up i did <laughs> narcotica <laughs> <laughs> i did I, I got the weed vibe off of his uh i, I his did talk. not i did not 100 percent. i got this I got <laughs> <laughs> that marijuana leaf, dude, hundred percent. You know, I, I guess I didn't because, you know, I've seen a bunch of interviews with John, and that's just who he is. Well, dude, but, like but I can't he's, distinguish he's, he's, between normal John, like not high John, and like high John. I think you don't have enough experience with the narcotica. That might be it. <laughs> <laughs> because he definitely has, like, dude, he went straight into like a cerebral place of like he was asking existential type. See, I don't know if if he went there willingly on his own or we brought it out of him. That's the thing. If what we brought fuck? it out of him, then dude, it wasn't we, the we asked him like, dude, look at our questions, man. We're like, let's go back oh. to 1987. About it's like he's actually <laughs> traveling. <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, explain the beginnings of John McAfee antivirus, and he's like, he ended up at some tangent that's like. Well, he was talking about Bill Gates and. Well, yeah, like a whole life. It, um, like you went uh, through uh, a journey of life, like not to plan things out. Yeah. Let things happen organically. I mean, that's not super like hippy dippy shit, but you know. No, what I, I mean? feel like I feel like it's good advice. I, I feel like he went like straight dad mode on us. Like, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> you know possible. What I mean? Like he just he get, he spit out like so much sage wisdom, like within a twenty minute time span, dude. It, I think when you go back and edit that, you're gonna find a lot of like yeah. nuggets of yeah, like just life <laughs> experience, man. He's fucking seventy four or something like that, dude. Yeah, I mean, and he should be giving out that life experience because he's yeah. he's gone through a lot. At the very end of the podcast, you asked him because <laughs> we wanted to get into crypto, which we didn't even have like any time for that. Or, yeah. like, you know, let's talk about your yeah, decentralized so, exchange, so, and he's like, "Fuck that! Let's yeah. talk about like <laughs> let's talk about like what you fuck should be doing with your yeah, life." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Like what? Like, he had an idea in his head, like, what he wanted to talk about. That's where I think the weed was coming out of him. Yeah. Like, like when you smoke weed, you no longer give a shit about business and, like, money. Like, you're more, like, in tune with, like, existentialism. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, we had a whole strategy here. We're going to, like, ease him into, like, crypto. Yeah. Just so that it's it's more of a conversation rather than a questionnaire. Because we didn't want to, like... Just pound just him with pound questions. Just questions because it's, it's not, not interesting. And he's not that kind of guy. Like, yeah, he's not. He, we just saw that like we asked him something and he went on for like 10 15 minutes like in 10 different angles yeah yeah you know which is great that's what i want i was hoping for but i was hoping we had more time to like explore more things yeah another question i had for him was like basically automation a, a new report by bank of america merrill lynch is predicting that amounts near uh 800 million human jobs deleted by 2035 right and there's other reports pretty much saying the exact same thing and so I wanted to get his idea on automation. Is like, is this like an, a legitimate threat that we need to be preparing for? Because fi- 15 years from now is not that long. I mean, we're looking at a million dollar Bitcoin right there. At least a million dollar Bitcoin. Either that or... Or, you know, hovering in the 600,000 yeah, to yeah. 1.5 million. But um, shit, that's a, you know, 800 million human jobs deleted. I mean, if that's not an apocalypse, I don't know what is. Apocalypse? Yeah, that's it's it says right there, man. Near total yeah, but apocalypse. But haven't you been saying like once this automation wave comes through, it's just gonna cheapen the cost of everything? So Well yeah, yeah, yeah. So that there was an argument that uh yeah, it definitely cheapens the cost for sure. Yeah. But if nobody can pay that cheap cost, what's what how is that any good? It's gonna have to be, yeah. 
It's 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 such a complex I haven't seen, discussion, man. I haven't seen a better alternative than UBI. So that's 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 another thing we we're going to talk to him and see his thoughts on UBI. Now, a lot of people don't agree with like free money, and I get it. I get it. But again, yeah. when you're talking about eliminating 800 million jobs by in 15 years, what is the alternative? That's that's where I'm at. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about China's digital currency. Oh, and, yeah. and I want I wanted to talk about specifically country digital currency versus the people's currency like Bitcoin. Like why why would any countryman choose a country coin over a people coin? But mostly because they're forced to. I yeah, but like. we sort of touched on it a little bit. It's like you were saying that the country could ban Bitcoin and ban all these things, and he's like, yeah. dude, right now marijuana is banned, but everybody still does it. But marijuana is not the same thing as currency, you know. No, no, it's not yeah. the same thing, but it's the same concept. Like banning well, things yeah, doesn't gonna be, mean there's going to be rebels. But I, government can 100 percent influence the adoption of cryptocurrency by just telling, uh, like, like if you can never buy a product with these cryptocurrencies, then what value do they actually have? If they're not, only thing you can really do with them is is peer to peer transactions, right? You're never going to be able to interact. With the mega corporations. Well, I'll bring thing. up the argument of like, what can you really do with gold? Like right now, right now. Yeah, but we're not talking about gold. We're, we're, no, I'm saying we're talking about fiat. Like the, the battle between cryptocurrency and fiat. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like, if they ban cryptocurrency, it's still going to be used because. Yeah, the speculators will, because like in, right now, nobody's using it as a currency or a means of exchange. Yeah, because it's because nothing accepts it. Well, it's an unregulated I don't think, thing. Dude, if you could buy groceries with Bitcoin, would you buy groceries with Bitcoin? Hell no, you wouldn't. We're talking about 2035 being a million dollar Bitcoin. Why would you spend it? I mean, if I was out of cash and like well, and yeah, had I had mean, Bitcoin, then yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, but what you would do is trade it for fiat. Well, that's the same thing as spending it. You know? Yeah, I, I, yeah that's the exact I, I, same thing. You know, you're transitioning your crypto to a fiat. And that crypto ceases to exist. You just <laughs> bought ge- goods with it, you know? Or it doesn't cease to exist. Like well, somebody else bought it from you, pretty much. But you would do your best not to spend it in the best way you can. Like, I mean, I've spent Bitcoin before, you know? Yeah, that was like in 2015. Yeah. No. Oh, well, 2017, 2017, yeah. 2018, something like that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, he, he's talk- he talked about... Yeah, that currency should be spent, not like hodled. Yeah, um, yeah. I just don't think governments are gonna lie down and just be like totally like okay. I I just wanted to hear his thoughts. Like, well, what does he think? A go- like, governments are gonna how are they gonna react to all of a sudden this like traditional monetary system that we're all involved in and like you know they have so much control over. <clears throat> all of a sudden, things like Libra, things like Bitcoin, things like everything. Yeah, that's no, that's a good question because what he was saying was. In the form of taxes, by using cryptocurrency, we we force the government to kind of change their ideologies to like, yeah, because they work for us. We don't work for them. Yeah, he's got like the anarchist perspective. Like, it, you know, the the best way to it, to enforce adoption is literally just to boycott the existing system. Yeah, like if, if and everyone you, and just you boycott it by using adopting cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency because yeah. it's literally what's going to destroy. The traditional finance system. Correct. But the, my thing is, dude, I'm, I'm again, I'm a cynic. I'm a skeptic. <clears throat> I, I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk. I want to know, like, well, you know, I asked him that question. Like, is it going to take a complete lack of trust in what, what, what our traditional finance system in order for people to adopt? Or yeah, will they naturally just funnel and, like, realize the superior technology in cryptocurrency, kind of like the Internet did? Yeah. You know? Like the internet was a new technology, and there was like a natural progression towards adoption. Like every year, probably like a new three or four or five percent of the global population was coming online. Yeah. Well, the same thing happened in crypto. I don't know. Yeah. It's yet yeah. to be seen. What are the factors that need to be in place in order for that to happen? Who knows, dude? It's it's slowly eroding away. The but banking infrastructure is slowly yeah. eroding away because yeah. all, out of their own doing, they're they're cannibalizing themselves. Because of the the, the the system of fiat currency is self-defeating by itself, right? So there's that. And then on top of that, cryptocurrencies with the new DeFi infrastructure, we can now earn interest on our, 
on our cryptocurrency. And we're talking about five to seven. Sometimes we've seen fifteen percent interest. Yeah, and uh, you can't get that percent interest on any product from the banks unless even a CD doesn't give you five percent anymore. Mm-hmm. So it gives you like one or two percent over over a span. You have to stake your fiat currency for more than five years to get one or two percent interest. No, I mean it makes sense. This is like DeFi is blowing up right now. I just read something like Dai just hit like a or Compound. Yeah, hit, hit hundred like million dollars locked. A uh, hundred million dollar cap. There's yeah. only you, you could only do a hundred million dollar cap, and now it's it's been raised to one hundred twenty million. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, for sure. Like that means adoption of these things. But who's doing this? These are crypto people. Yeah. And I'm always arguing like. And I know John uses Dai all the time. Everyone does because it's a no brainer. Yeah. A die because, like I said, I, in 2017 bull market run, I was always, I never did the thing where, like, I had points in time where I could literally tell where the market was heading. Like, just a dip is coming. Yeah. But I could never, I never trusted Tether enough to, like, you know, Tether out, even though that was like, uh, the, yeah. that was like the main, that was like a strategy, the yeah. main strategy. Yeah, just Tether out and yeah. then wait for the corrections to happen, then come back in. <clears throat> but I didn't trust it. You know, something like die, I trust way more than Tether. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah yeah i like die i like the whole DeFi thing there's some people shitting on it which i don't understand i have to think that they don't they don't understand it what are they saying it's just not safe no the the whole it's basically it's very simple uh maker dow yeah. to uh to get some die you have to put up 150 percent capital i mean yeah collateral. See, we never even understood that remember when we were no, first we, talking we, about we that? understand it we we get it I well, well it's, it's like it's like you're locking up more. You, you lock you lock two Ethereum to unlock one point five Ethereum worth of die. Yeah, which is like three hundred bucks. Or you lock you lock one point five Ethereum to get one Ethereum, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, and wait. so why would you do that? Well, you have some sort of investment that you want to use your Ethereum, but you don't want to use your Ethereum. So you take a loan based off your Ethereum. You lock up one point five X. You use one X. For your investment, you reap the rewards from that investment. Ideally, you pay back the loan. You keep your two Ethereum. You made money from your investment. That's why you do it. I guess it's just because it's it's it. It's a decentralized loan network, so they don't have like the traditional collection yeah. capabilities that like and, and a, the, a bank does. So and, th- and the only collateral right now that's programmable is cryptocurrency. Yeah, so they're gonna, it's, eventually it's yeah. going to be your deed to your house, yeah. your car, mm-hmm. any any physical assets that can be tokenized yeah. and recognized by the government. Right, yeah. that has to be you have to you have to back this thing up with legal uh, infrastructure. Just in case something happens, right? I guess that makes more sense when you think about it like that. Yeah, there's a lot more risk involved with these loans, and it's 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 a DAO, it's decentralized though. So yeah, they've got to mitigate that risk somehow. Yeah, if you're putting up 1.5x like what you're receiving in loan, you're more likely to pay that back. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't, you lose a 1.5x. The person that loaned you that money gets their full principal. Plus the interest and yeah. everyone, it's like, it's like the banking infrastructure run by nodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like this is this is great. I'm st- I'm still not 100 percent sure like how the uh, voting infrastructure works, but you know. Yeah, I mean, like, you did get to ask, did did we require a financial collapse in order for yeah. crypto adoption to like reach critical mass? Uh, I think I worded it differently, but yeah, I, I kind of got to that point. I wanted to know, like, what, you know, like I said, he's got like the anarchist, anarchist approach, but like the majority of people don't think that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I kind of wanted to emphasize that, like, there's a younger generation here who's like, we're embedded so deeply into the system. There is like, dude, do you think? How often do you think people think about like, damn, it's like this U.S. dollar really sucks, you know, like. <laughs> this cat. Uh, I don't know. That's that's a good question. I mean, on the daily, never. I think the only time like I, people really started talking about it was whenever. In I feel. I, f- I do feel like the U.S. dollar kind of sucks. How could you say that? Just because I know how it works. That's yeah, why. exactly. But, but most people it, don't know. They yeah. they don't think about it. So I I, I don't think that's kind of what I was getting. At. Like yeah, people don't think about that because it works. 
currently. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, it's the the back end of how it works isn't uh, you know well known. I I feel like if people knew how fiat currency worked, they would have rioted years ago, decades ago. <laughs> like this is this is sort of scammy. But if it works, it works, man. That's well, what I'm saying. When we get to the that thing, point, the when thing we get is, to the riots, the thing is, it doesn't work. The reason why it seems like it works is because they keep kicking the can down oh, the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That but, debt but ceiling is always rising uh, and I'm always saying, rising. But, but from a consumer perspective, it works. It's like a hot potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the presidents keep passing the hot potato until like it can't reach no more, and then there's a financial collapse. Yeah. We've seen it in other countries. It's because the finan- the fiat currency mechanism self defeats itself. That's yeah. By design. Why do they do it that way? It's just, I, I guess the conspiracy theories is the, the people in power, the Federal Reserve. That's how they design it because they're the winners. Mm-hmm. They're the ones issuing the loans and everybody owes them all the money that exists. Yeah. Well, what else about the McAfee interview? <laughs> Overall thoughts? Happy? Pleased? Oh, well, you know, anytime we get to talk to someone like John, like, it's always good. Even if it was like... Yeah, man. 20, 25 minutes, whatever. Yeah, when he fucking sent me that message, like, we got McAfee coming, <laughs> coming up. Coming up. <laughs> fucking, like, creamed my pants, Get dude. ready. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I was like, what? No way. But. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we had a bunch of questions, and uh, we didn't really get too far into this list. I'm going to blame it on the weed. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a busy guy. He's got, That's like, here. he's got shit, other people to talk to, so. Yeah. Shit to do. <laughs> Well, what else is going on in crypto, Willis? Any other news? Well, I sent you an article where this guy... About DeFi? Yeah, about DeFi. Yeah, man. Like, we're always talking about, like, what's the next phase? I feel like... Dude, I, I'm really liking DeFi, man. Like, Well, because it has the, the potential to generate you passive income. Well, that... Sure. Well, yeah, for sure that. But it's not one of those speculative things that I've seen other than MakerDAO. Like, that's the only speculative coin out there. Um, that I've seen so far. Now, I haven't looked too far into it. But let me see if I can pull up this article. So, you saw Joker, right? Yeah. What did you think? About the movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, the actual Joker. Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> what do you mean, what did I think? It yeah, was a good-ass movie, man. Yeah, you liked it, right? It was pretty good. It was, uh, I mean, I didn't think it was going to be bad or anything. I know Joaquin Phoenix is a fucking god tier actor. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the movie was basically just like let him roll with the character. So how could it be bad? He nailed the laugh. He nailed he the. Did, he did. He nailed the uh, like loner incel vibes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, I, 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 on a, yeah, dude. I'll, I'm not surprised. Um, not surprised, but I walked away with there kind of like with the feeling of like, dude, it's kind of like, I talked about this before. Like, it's kind of like hypocritical the way we hero worship a person like that. And then whenever like news headlines come out, like, you know, some incel just shot up his high school and killed 10, 15 people. What? It's literally the exact same story, just like on the big screen. Well, applied yeah. to a comic book villain. Unfor- like, unfortunately, that has happened like literally a few minutes ago in Los oh, Angeles. Yeah. See? It's happening. It's never going to stop happening, I don't think. And it happened at a school. So do you think those people who are like, you know, talking about like this this movie needs to be boycotted, what do you think? No, no of course not. Yeah, you can't boycott expression, right? Art. No, you can't. No, and <clears throat> I mean, I see where they're coming from. It's it's sort of like idolizing, you know. These incels. Yeah, people like like the Joker, like yeah, Arthur those, Fleck. Those people exist. Like I said, that's what I liked about the movie. They do you know, exist. Yeah, mostly that's comic. That's the sad thing. And yeah, most comic book heroes or villains, they're like outside the realm of yeah reality. But the Joker is like a representation of like a a, a decent segment of like humanity. Yeah, lonely. You know, what I thought was like really interesting that I haven't like thought about until the mo- until I saw the movie is that his laughter was a physical manifestation of his sadness. And it made sense why Joker's always laughing is because the dude is sad. But now in the movie, like, that was just a neurological condition that he had, which yeah. is a real thing. Yeah. Um, But when I first saw the movie the first time, 
I thought it was because he was laughing because he was expressing his sadness. But that's that wasn't exactly what was happening. Yeah. I mean, he had many triggers, I think. Like, if he got yeah. anxious. Yeah, 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 exactly. He would know, start he laughing. He would start laughing uncontrollably if he got yeah. sad or maybe, like, a little afraid. Uncomfortable, yeah. Uncomfortable, yeah. And I think that disease is not just laughing, it's also crying. It's just like a, an yeah. outburst of emotion. Yeah, you know correct. What I'm saying? Correct. It's a, yeah. it's a crazy disease. We saw a couple of videos of it on YouTube. It's yeah. like... There's a, yeah, there's it wasn't a, as creepy as the Joker, but mm. it's... I can tell it's pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. So what you got here? What is this? All right. So the uh, title of this article says, How to Earn Passive Income by Lending Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Stable Coins. So uh, there's a chart here that talks about Binance is doing that, right? Uh, you can earn 3% on Bitcoin, dude. By doing what? By staking it in Binance. Now, now the way Binance works is that not every everybody can stake their Bitcoin. Yeah. Because 3% is like a, a ton. Um, I and so Binance opens a few slots for people to stake their 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 Bitcoin in there, and uh, so so not everybody can earn such high interest rates here. Okay, but I remember when I joined Compound, it was like seventeen percent. Seventeen percent, dude. dude. It was fucking gnarly, dude. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was because we were like in the heat of a bear market, right? Yeah, it was mind boggling. Like what what was happening, dude? Yeah, fuck, that was a lot. Yeah, and look at Compound now. Like, well. Dude, that is such a no-brainer strategy, man. Like you, seven percent. Like now that we know what what how these uh, interest rates vary based on like market conditions. Yeah. Yeah, the no-brainer strategy, man, is like when there's a bull market, you 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 make your money, and as soon as this bear market yeah. comes around again, dude, you got to put your money into these interest earning. Yeah, and account, you know, well, think about this: when it's when it's a bear market, when Bitcoin's declining, these numbers start to go up. That's what I'm saying. Which is so, bad. <laughs> what? Think about it. Let's say we reach two hundred thousand dollars Bitcoin. That's when you sell, right? Yeah, because you're anticipating like the bubble's about to pop. Yeah, again, yeah, the know? bubble's about to pop. Yeah, you don't keep Bitcoin at that point. No. So you, why you, why would you use these interest rates? Even even you're gonna have like a ten per, man. I would well, say at, 10, at five percent Bitcoin. Like it's enticing, but. You don't want to do that. You want to go into die, stake your die, earn interest. Yeah. You want to die out instead of tether yeah. out. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. no. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, on and, compound and, or some well, other kind of. Whatever. Whatever supports a die here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all around 7 8%. What is, what is TUSD? True US dollars, I guess. Okay. It's just another stable coin. Wow, this is consistent. 8% across the board. All the stable coins are 8%. On pretty ne- good on Nexo. <laughs> oh no, that, this is legit. I see ads like on on this for Brave all the time. Oh yeah, not saying it's legit. I'm just saying that I've seen this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, for sure, like I said, that that's a no brainer, man. Like, and not only that, what's cool is I found another site that you can arbitrage. Now I'm not saying arbitraging is a cool idea, but what I'm saying is you can if you were staking your die in, uh, let's say Compound. And you're getting 5% in compounds, for example. And you go to Nexo and they're getting like 8%. You can go from compound directly into Nexo with this application. Mm-hmm. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get to talk to uh, McAfee about that either. Yeah, and I know I, I know McAfee, he does use die all the time. He's a, he's a, he's a die guy. Yeah. And uh, obviously smart. Yeah, I wanted to get his insight also on like how he plans on you know tackling the liquidity issue behind decentralized exchanges because they've been around. He's not like the first. He's not like a pioneer of decentralized exchanges. You know, there's been a few, quite a few before yeah. him for like a year or two now. This thing's been out, but the adoption rate is pretty lack. You know what I mean? There's obviously like a big pool for like centralized services right now. I'm not sure if it's because people just don't know. Yeah. Or people just don't, they don't understand the benefit of it. Like, what is, what is it going to take? Yeah, and for some reason, uh, McAfee Dex doesn't show up on Brave, but it does show up on Safari. Mm-hmm. So, not sure what's happening there. But maybe it's something that their developers need to look at. Yeah, well, let's go over the benefits, though. Like, why, why a decentralized exchange? Obviously, the big one is... No central point of failure, right? You can't get hacked. 
Yeah, uh, and not only that, so so the, the most important thing about a decentralized exchange is that it's not a custodial service. You're not sending these guys any Bitcoin to trade Bitcoin. What you're doing is you're saying, I want to buy Bitcoin, and somebody has to sell you that Bitcoin. So you post up a, a sell or you post up an order, and somebody fulfills that sell or fulfills that order. That's mm-hmm. it. And it's peer-to-peer. So you're literally trading your cryptocurrency, one cryptocurrency for another cryptocurrency by selling it or buying it. Yeah. That's one. So, and then the fees, obviously. Yeah, so there's no fees. I think there's only taker fees. And uh, and it's like a quarter of a percent. So it's it's reasonable. So the benefits are there. Like if you, if you <coughs> compare the two, a centralized uh, exchange to a decentralized one, you would... I think most people would prefer to use a decentralized service because there's more benefits than, you know, not using it. But the problem is liquidity. What do you see going on here? There's like no activity. There's like one trade every 12 hours or something like that. Yeah. You know, the charts are supposed to show something here. Um. So, yeah, that's that's I mean, if you go to there's one called IDEX. There's others out there. Uh, Zero X Protocol has like a few centralized exchanges, bit shares. Well, here's the trade history. And then keep in mind, this was released like a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, this is only. So a this few. is brand new. So over time, of course, the liquidity is going to increase. But I don't. How do you get to that Binance level? You know. Yeah, and how do you incentivize people to use a Dex versus a uh, the standard? This goes all of it like I because keep, man Binance they they shill their 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 crypto a lot and it's successful like all these trading competition that they have it's yeah nonstop man it's every week there's a trading competition yeah like win cars and yeah like, Binance just caught on like hot fire dude they were at the right place at the right time I remember you know because at the time all the exchanges were butt ugly. Everything yeah. everyone was using Bitrex at the time which is very ugly at the time yeah. I mean, it wasn't hard to use or anything. It just it just wasn't pleasant to look at. Then all of a sudden, Binance comes out with this clean UI, and it ha- like I said, it came at the perfect time where like Chinese tokens were like the hot, the hotness of the month. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And the only way to get to these Chinese ICOs was to get onto Binance and purchase them. So it was like the perfect on ramping scheme they could think of. You know, it right. worked out perfectly. So yeah. so in this article, they talk about custodial lending platforms where. These companies, they take your, or you stake your, you give them your cryptocurrency, right? And they, and they return to you interest. And, um, which I don't really like that much because non-custodial, like non-custodial services like DeFi, Nuo, Dharma, Compound, you maintain control of your cryptocurrency and they still yeah return you. You don't have to worry about them exit scamming pretty yeah. much. There's and, no and, risk of that. And Coinbase is doing it. So all of these like centralized companies doing it, it's not that it's not safe. It's just that if you want to minimize risk, you, you're not going to use these. Yeah. But uh, and, and, and a lot of them, they're all like, they're custodied by Gemini Trust Company, the issuer of GUSD, and then they have insurance for everything. BitGo is insured up to $100 million, you know, and it's custody of BitGo. So these guys are... You know, they're doing the best they can to protect themselves. So didn't you say before, like, you think, like, this DeFi ecosystem, the more it grows up, uh, like, this is going to be what catalyzes the next? See, it's hard for, it's hard to believe that, now that I think about it, that that's yeah. going to catalyze, like, the next run-up. Yeah. Because these are not s- lending. It's not a speculative S- situation. Yeah. Um, this is when, like the ver- after you've mm-hmm. earned all your crypto earnings... Yeah. This is where you put your money. Yeah. Like the variance between like a lending platform is not, there's not much to it, right? Yeah. There's not. Yeah. I mean, just if you go back to the chart here, it's all around the same percentage. <laughs> and of course, Coinbase, 1.25%. One per, 1. Nobody's going to stake there. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all good stuff and it, it benefits the whole ecosystem as a whole, but yeah. Is this going to be like the ICO rush? I don't think so. Yeah. It and if it was, it would be happening like right now because it is happening right now. Yeah. DeFi. But you never know. This, in a way, if if you as a normal guy says in cryptos, like I could invest in Bitcoin 
exit at the right time, and I'm going to earn six or seven percent of my earnings better than a bank account. Yeah. Like that could incentivize you to like jump into the. It's true. It could, on, it could on ramp more people just into crypto in general. Like if the word got out that yeah, there's there's a savings account out there in this crypto world, you put your money into it, you know, you're gonna get a decent percentage back Shit. more than you would five to five else. to eight percent. Like not bad. That's really really good. That's hard to get in the real world. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? You're not getting eight percent in the stock market right now. Mm. I mean, it is at all-time highs, but still. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're saying. It's tough to get. Like, a professional trader's happy if he has, like, a 15% annual, you know, yeah. Yeah. performance. Yeah. He'll boast about those numbers for sure. So, the only thing you got to be careful of is, like, these numbers fluctuate. So, they're not always going to be 6 or 7%, right? It goes up and down. Especially compound. Like I said, we I, I got in when it was, like, 17%. But now it's at five. Yeah. Unfortunate. But I guess this signals like, you know, people are pulling their money out and putting it into crypto again. Yeah. That's true. Right? This is a good indicator. Like if these interest rates are going down so low. That means people are putting in into these interest companies. Once it starts going up, that's when people are pulling out and investing in Bitcoin and stuff. Because they, they want to incentivize people to put in their money, right? So the only uh, way to incentivize is to increase the rates. Yeah, but I thought they adjusted the rates based on like the the poor performance of the collateral essentially. Like whenever whenever the Ethereum was at like its worst was whenever the the compound interest rates were at its highest. Because Ethereum is a collateral. If Ethereum is all of a sudden devaluing, that's like that's like your you know, your collateral is becoming less valuable. You gotta raise interest rates so people pay off their loans. You're like incentivizing them to pay off their loans quicker. Uh, mm, I think I I think what I was thinking is the more people that stake their die, the lower the interest rate. Yeah. And the camera die again? No, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> no, we're good. <clears throat> No, no, no. I guess we got we yeah we definitely got to keep a closer eye on this because yeah the last time you talked to me about DeFi dude there was like a third of this many like DeFi platforms out there. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. This shit is blowing up. There's like a it lot was just more. like Compound now now yeah. like Coinbase is in it and whatever happened to that one thing you showed me the lottery. Um, remember it was pool, like pool something. Uh, ETH pool no pool, pool together. together. <laughs> it's purple. Purple. This is it. All right, I just want to see like what's the pull at. <laughs> Holy shit. Was that $338,000? What? Total die locked. 391,000. That's not what's up for grabs though. That's how much currently dies. currently in the pool. Yeah, but then like there's a certain percentage that comes out of that three hundred ninety one thousand, which is the interest, right? And then that's what's up for grabs, the pool. That's true. I think so, this. Yeah. So with this uh, pool together, you uh, you have like let's say a hundred die, you you put that hundred die into a pool together, and uh, so collectively you earn interest on. 338,000 die, right? Yeah. So what happens is that interest gets into this pot that somebody, so when you put in 100 die, you get 100 tickets, mm -hmm. something like that. And so if you get drawn, you end up winning the, the interest of that entire pot. So rather than st putting your $100 worth of die in compound and earning interest, the 5% interest on, on $100, you're earning interest on $338,000. Or you potentially could win. And you could potentially win. If you don't yeah. win, then you your $100 didn't earn anything. And you didn't lose it either. And you didn't lose it. Which right. is like, that's the big kicker. Yeah. If it was like a chew lottery, like you're just wasting money, then yeah, fuck this. That's why I wouldn't even <laughs> want to endorse this. Yeah. <laughs> but this is cool. I like this. 
And it looks like it's growing too. Because I think last time we looked at it, it was I think it was like less than five grand or something. Yeah, it was something like it that. It was tiny. Fuck, man. DeFi. Yeah, interest calculation compounds current die interest rate plus the amount of interest generated by sponsorship money. Interesting. Who sponsored die? What does that even mean? What? Look, compounds current die interest plus the amount of interest generated by sponsorship money. So it's not telling me who the sponsor is. So this is pretty cool. Um, but again, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of die. To, in my opinion, it's better to earn it by yourself so that you keep the interest rather than put in a hundred thousand dollars in this pool where you potentially could lose. Right, and yeah. you don't gain you don't gain any of that interest. Yeah, but if you have a hundred thousand dollars, you're essentially you're purchasing more likely like a to fourth win. a fourth of the chance to win that That's whole. True, you know what I mean. That's true. So you yeah. can like whale this thing, but I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, didn't it used to like show like what the actual individual contributions? It used to. It used to. Let's see. It's yeah. Back go learn. go back down to the, the click on it like the uh, join the pool. No, not that. Like well, on the pool itself. Yeah, I tried. Nothing. Nothing? Yeah. <sighs> That's the price so far. And by the time that uh, this is finished, it's likely going to be 305 So the oh, prize okay. in one day. View current players. There we go. See, look at that fucking whale, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that guy's just killing the game right now. He's got one and two. He's got like a almost fifty percent probability. Jeez. So he's just raking it well, in. Well, that's about half half of that, right? Yeah. So he's got like fifty percent of the tickets essentially, are right, in his hand. See, this guy. That's to me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go in. What the hell? He's got a fifty percent chance to win. Why would I stake my currency in here? So do the calculation then. Like, what would he, like, See, what could he earn if he just put all well, that? Well, more, 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 because he has only one hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars, right? And uh, let's say five percent. What is that? Five thousand dollars in a year. <laughs> Divide that by ten. That's uh, five hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. But he's doing it. He sees a benefit, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. He wants to whale this game. And not only that, so that he's earning he's earning three hundred dollars in a couple of days. That's yeah. the difference. Right? If you wanted to earn five hundred dollars, you could earn five hundred in a month. True. So you're earning three hundred bucks in a few days. Yeah. That's the difference. So yeah, that's I mean this this is all came from DeFi, man. That's we're seeing something, man. We're seeing something. <laughs> cool stuff happening, man. Yeah. But yeah, let's call it, dude. Okay. Um so yeah, that's that was the uh the interview with John. Um it was good. Uh we want to have him back on cuz we want to f- finish all these questions. Yeah, we'll see if he comes back. Yeah. If, but yeah, next week your brother wants to come through. Oh yeah, so we're thinking about <laughs> live streaming a uh, the unveiling of the. We truck. should hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, the Tesla. What's it called? The Model T. <laughs> I the Model T. <laughs> I don't think no, so. I'm, right? I'm predicting that it's gonna it's gonna be called the Model Z. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Because he's take got that. the X, Y, and then the Z. Mm. Okay. Right. He he started with sexy. Now. What trucks aren't sexy? Well, the Model S, Model Three. Model X, Y. Wow. Okay, Sexy, I, right? I never made that correlation. Oh, you never made that connection? No. Yeah, he did it on purpose. Of course he did. Yeah. It's a fucking weird dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking crazy. And then, uh, and then, so I'm saying that it, I think it's going to be called the Model Z. Sexies. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, that'll be interesting. <laughs> but So yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, at the Block Runner. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Yes, sir. All right, peace.